38,000 missing persons are reported each year in Australia. Of these, 98% are ultimately located. The remaining 700 individuals are declared missing indefinitely, alive or dead. One person goes missing in Australia every 15 minutes. Now, these stats are both good and bad. Good in a sense that 98% are ultimately located, but bad that 700 individuals per year slash about double the size of this audience is still a large number. Missing persons is an ever-increasing challenge. So let's focus on amending these figures. Now, let's pretend for fun that you have been found deceased. Your identity is lost. So we don't know that it's you that we've found. This may be because we didn't find a full skeleton. We maybe found some bones or bits and pieces. This is our first challenge. There's no flashing neon light that has your name and emergency contact details. We have just started, and we have very little to work with. We may never find out who you are. Right now, there are more than 500 bodies, or bits and pieces of bodies, in morgues around Australia waiting to be identified. So what happens if we say we found you and your best friend hiking, and we found you as skeletons? You're the same ancestry, sex, and age. How will we tell you apart? In situations like this, height is incredibly important. But do you know your height? Do you know the height that I'm talking about? You probably think that's a really strange question. But in reality, there are several different types of height. So, let's start. One. Your maximum height, or the maximum height that you could potentially achieve, is determined by your genetics. It can also be called your genetic potential height, because we don't quite reach our full potential. I'm kidding. But seriously, though, genetic potential height is theoretical. Your actual height, or the actual height that you've achieved today, is determined by your environment. So your genetics act as a blueprint and you as the product. Your genetics could say you'd have rippling abs and tennis ball biceps, but in reality, that may not be the case. This is also the same with height. You would have to, or this is also the same with height. Why? Because the environment that you grew up in determined the person, you, like the height you are today. And this is because you'd have to have a really strict diet. You'd have to live in a perfectly healthy environment. And we can measure your actual height, but there are several different types of measured height. I know, it just gets more complicated. So let's go. <laughs> One, forensic height. This is your height on a document, license, or medical records. But in reality, it's a measurement of number two, your living height. Now. This is very variable. Your height can change from waking up in the morning to when you go to bed at night. This is because during the day, you're upright to the force of gravity and you decrease in height. And over time, day in and day out, upright to the face of gravity for years, you eventually decrease in height permanently. So your forensic height may not be your living height. It may not be the height you are today, and it may not be the height you are when you're 80. Which brings me to the third height, cadaveric height. Now, as you can probably guess, this is your height at death if you are a whole body lying down with nothing missing. So, which height really matters? Well, all of them. When your family fills out a missing persons report, the investigators will ask, for your height. 
uh, they were like this high. But in reality, how would we measure that gesture? What if it was wrong? What will we do then? Collect more info and look at your license. And in Queensland, a study from my lab, the Skeletal Biology and Forensic Anthropology Research Laboratory here at QUT reported that 60% of Queenslanders have the incorrect height on their license. What does your license say? Probably nothing. Queensland has recently removed height from their licenses, so investigators will have to rely on your family even more, which is the second problem, the second challenge, because height estimates are unreliable. Now, let's go back to the morgue where we're analyzing your skeleton. We are trying to estimate your height. So one way to do this is if you are found with every bone in your skeleton, we can stack them up like you're standing to get your height. But that would mean we would need every single bone in your body to do this that contributed to height. But most commonly, we don't find all the bones. We find some, or bits and pieces. So more commonly, we can take the length from one or some of your bones and enter it into an equation that equals your height range. So your height plus error. This second equation is the most applicable. So the equation was developed, the equations we use today were developed in 1952 by two American researchers for the USA population. It was an important study, and these equations are still used all around the world, including here in Australia. But there are some problems with this. So there are, one, Australia is very different from America. We would have different heights. Overall, Australia is quite diverse due to our migration. But in reality, America is potentially our closest counterpart, number two. Both indigenous populations were colonized by England with large quantities of individuals migrating from Europe to both Australia and the US. You can think of this as a similar European genetic pool. Number three, Australia's nutrition is pretty good. We consume a lot of meat, due in part to our strong agricultural economy. We also have fruit and vegetable readily available at all times of the year. This adds to our benefit, as with good nutrition can increase our height. Which then leads me to number four. Australia has free access to healthcare, comparative to the costs accumulated in the American healthcare system. Now, take this into a financial context. Small or solvable conditions, such as broken bones, may not necessarily be corrected in a healthcare system that's expensive. Five, we live in a pretty hot, humid climate overall. Uh, these factors can increase our arm and leg length to help us expel heat quickly, which can then contribute to height. And finally, six, the bones used to establish these equations are not the current population we are seeing in America today let alone here. The old adage that you were taller than your grandparents actually has some truth. But what do all these factors mean? Well, populations with improved living standards, you will have different heights. So different populations with different living standards will have different heights. And one population equation shouldn't be applied to another. It's just not applicable. So we need our own equations. Oh, you're probably asking why in Australia we're using such equations from America. Well, they're the best we had. But we now also know that these equations are underestimating Australian height based on your femur. Australians are taller than what these American equations are saying. Now, think about if we use these equations in the field today. We may not find the individual to whom the remains belong to. 
you could be missing for a while. We need our own equations, our own skeletal collection facilities. And my lab has gone ahead and done just that. We are able to 3D create bones and then create estimation equations based from these bones. We've created height equations based on the femur, and my research is creating height equations based on the humerus. So my day in the lab is actually pretty cool, right? So I take CT scans from the morgue, all QT's body donation facility, and I 3D model the bone that I want, in this case, the humerus. From there, I measure it to come up with correlations to height, and then we create height estimation equations from this. So this means that we only have two bones that can estimate height, which is, how would that help find you, though, if you have 206 bones in your body, if you're a textbook skeleton? So we've only done about 1.9% of the work. Realistically, it's more than 1.9, because we aren't going to measure all the individual bones of your skull. That'd be a little bit ridiculous. And we aren't going to measure all the tiny bones in your hands, your feet, or even your ribs. So that brings us to about 7% of the work done, which means we've got 93% of the work still to do. Which brings me to the third challenge. Our equations need work. I know, right, though? So many challenges to overcome just to find out who you are. But these challenges are a part of everyday life for the people that investigate missing persons or even help or assist with their identification. But there's something you can do today. You can help us with the second challenge. It's really simple. Measure your height. Tell that measurement to your family. Give us the best chance to find you. It's been 15 minutes. <laughs>